Hey everybody, so we are gonna talk exercise today. I normally talk about food prep and we talk about diet and all that kind of stuff, but today I actually wanted to talk about exercise because I have uh, lost 100 pounds, as you most of you know, and I was not always an exerciser, <laughs> but and I know a lot of you watch me on Instagram, you see me on Facebook, and I do work out a lot now, but it wasn't always that way. And so today I thought what we could do, hey Dana, is I thought we could just, I'll just share my story of how I got started, uh, like what my background was in exercise and all that kind of stuff. And if you guys have questions, one of the things I think that I specialize in is helping women who have never enjoyed exercise, finding a reason to do it and getting their mindset wrapped around it. So. If you don't know who I am, I am Corinne of fitandfat.com. You can easily go to the website by just going to P as in Paul, N as in no, P as in Paul, 411.com. My before and afters are over there. You can get a free course on weight loss, all that kind of good stuff. But when I was a kid, I was very obese. When I was nine, I started putting on weight. Um, I was not a naturally thin person ever a day in my life. <laughs> it has always been... Uh, you know, like even being thin now has been work. You know, it. I think it will always be work for me, but I think it's work for everyone. I think we'd like to think that it's easier for skinny people. It's, I, I know naturally thin people, it's not that easy on them. They tell me all the time the problems that they are having and stuff. So when I was nine, I moved to Nashville. I lived in Alabama. My parents got a divorce. And so we moved up here to be with my grandparents. And when we were little, we were like busted ass broke. And so uh, we ate drive throughs all the time. You know, it was just didn't know where the next meal was coming sometimes, all that kind of good stuff. We move up here and my grandparents, God love them, they cooked us everything. And it was like hamburgers and french fries. Now my grandfather always had a garden, so I actually got to get some really good vegetables too. But the majority of our meals were, you know, just junk. We were just, you know, and they would just make cakes and pies and you name it, we would have it. And so when I was like by the eighth grade, I was well over 200 pounds. Uh, you know, I think I was at least 210, something like that. And never played sports. I did play volleyball like one season, but I didn't get to play much. Um, I remember PE was always a struggle. You know, because I was the big girl. And like even back and back then you couldn't even find like big girl cute clothes like you can now. Like I used to have to wear older lady shorts and they would ride up and you know, and I didn't want anybody to see my legs and it was just it was very like that's why I stayed out of sports. Um, not just because I was so unhealthy, but also like I just remember being so ashamed of my body. Went to high school and joined the band. Um, I lost a little weight in high school. I was usually somewhere in the like 175-ish range, 170 range. Um, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't lose it sensibly. I actually developed an ulcer, probably from stressing out and stuff. <laughs> I, had, I had terrible IBS when I was in high school. Um, lots of problems with depression. Um, I attempted suicide at the age of 17. I um, was in the hospital for three weeks. I was in a coma. I mean, like, seriously, my high school career was pretty, it was hard. I, I mean, I have lots of good memories and stuff, but, um, you know, I was battling weight, battling depression, battling, you know, health problems and stuff all through high school, and it just, it kind of caught up with me when I was 17. Then through my 20s, I um, traveled a lot for my job. I worked for a restaurant company and got out of the restaurants and into the corporate office. Traveled all the time, ate all the time, and I got really good at basically weighing 175 or 250 pounds. Like, it was one or the other. I was always extreme dieting and getting down to about 175 and then totally rebounding and going straight back up because I never learned how to lose the weight in a way I could keep it off in a way that was like sustainable where I could do my life at the same time and I didn't exercise I mean I just I rarely ever did if I did exercise at all it was punitive I hated every minute of it I would pick things that I thought would make me lose weight um, I would, you know, and just like, just do cardio, just do whatever. Like, I, just, I didn't do it sensibly at all. So, um, about, uh, 
I guess, well, well, I was 28 when I got married and I was around 175 again, <laughs> on the way back down. I had met my husband and he and I, um, I don't know, he just inspired me to eat a little better, to just, you know, do a little better and that kind of stuff. So I lost some weight and wasn't doing anything too extreme. We would play racquetball sometimes. It was the first time that I ever actually was doing any forms of exercise like he and I would we would try to we would go for walks and we would play a little racquetball and stuff but it was about spending time together and connecting I really didn't think of it as I need to get my exercise in or I'm going to get fat like that just wasn't happening so I have my son we get married gain all the way back up to 250 plus like I quit weighing at 250 I didn't even want to see the fucking scale like I'm just like I don't need it I don't want it like get it away from me and then I hit my my moment where all of you've probably heard my story a thousand times of how like I'm looking at Logan he's wanting to play it's 10 o'clock in the morning and I am so tired and so exhausted physically that I just couldn't do it and that's when I knew that something had to change so after I had my big balling session with Chris that night that I was going to change my life and that this was the time I was going to do it, he just said, you know, whatever it takes, whatever you, whatever you want to do, I'm supportive. The one thing that he said that he's always said to me is, the one thing I know is you can do anything you want to do. You just need to do it. It's like you're so capable. You're so smart. He's always just thought that I was, you know, the cat's meow. No matter what size I was or whatever, I mean, he's always thought of me as smart and sexy and he, he says to me all the time that I'm hilarious I mean I know I'm kind of funny but <laughs> he's like you know giggling at me all the time and he's like you're just funny like you just say funny shit all the time <laughs> so I decided to start walking and that was it was the moment for me with exercise was I wanted to lose weight and I also wanted to be active and I knew that like it was like the first time in my life that I thought if I'm gonna lose this weight I've got to figure out how I can exercise and like it because here's the thing like you you're not gonna lose weight because you exercise exercise is something you do for yourself it is not something you do to yourself and a lot of people do a lot of exercise to themselves instead of developing a real relationship with it and I knew for me that exercise was going to be key in my weight loss, not because I was going to be burning calories, but I was going to push myself to um, learn how to do new things. I wanted to, like, it felt good. It inspired me to, um, I don't know, it just, it inspired me to, like, eat better, to think more about myself, to see what else I could do, those kind of things. So, uh, I started with my walking, and as most of you know, I started with 15 minutes a day. I would drive 15 minutes to get to the Y, do my 15 minutes, drive back home. I didn't want to walk in my neighborhood and stuff. I, I was, you know, in postpartum at that point. I was probably very depressed the majority of Logan's first year. I just never was diagnosed, but knowing myself, um, you know, with depression and stuff, I'm pretty sure I was like, in the in the toilet <laughs> over you know having a baby and stuff hey Don how are you doing so um, I started with the walk-in and then I would just slowly do more and I would slowly do more and I would slowly do more and I would push myself a little harder and then I tried the elliptical and started like looking around the gym at the other things I wanted to try and stuff like that and that's how my exercise love started so one of the things that I try to teach my clients, and like, and especially the girls that join my site, I don't even teach them about exercise until week four of their program, mainly because the first part of it, I want them to get so dialed in on the food. You know, I really want you guys to understand how like important the food is to feeling better having some control over how much you eat. You know, y'all know me, we are not doing any kind of starvation stuff. We are eating, everybody repeat after me, we start eating when we feel slight hunger, we stop eating when we feel satisfied. 
and that's how I teach no calorie counting and stuff but the reason why I save exercise is to make sure that they're good at that so that when they, there's a bug trying to bite me so that when they start exercising I can introduce it to them in a way that it is to help them feel better and to just start moving their body and stuff not as a punitive measure a lot of people guys it's the worst thing you can ever do is to bastardize your exercise program to sit around and think about well this is what's going to get the fat off the only thing that gets the fat off is what you put in your mouth it is the only thing exercise is such a small component to the physical like the actual physical process of you losing the weight but what exercise can do for you is create like help you feel better it can motivate you you it can you'll your body will start change as you're losing the weight your body will change in different ways as you exercise you know but I tell people all the time if you're not invested on changing your food you're not invested on redefining the relationship with the food don't think exercise is somehow going to like do jack shit for you I know plenty of overweight women who kill it in the gym all the time and then they kill it with the food later all of it so you can not like I don't want anybody thinking that like exercise is going to be like the the shot that gets all the weight off it just isn't but it is a gift and so the other thing that I talk to my clients about is like you know I think that a lot of you really discount walking the majority of my people that join with me have lots of weight to lose they need to start with the walking they need to start like the here's the benefit of walking like I today that was my exercise now I did run yesterday but I knew that today needed to be like a light day and so I went walking and it felt great and my mind cleared and I got fresh air the reason I'm even doing this live is because I wanted to be outside again today because I took that walk and I was like oh this is wonderful I'm gonna be outside again today so it's like one of those things where like you want to make sure that you are starting where you need to start and that's why I one of the best things I ever did for myself was start with the walk-in one is the easiest habit to form anybody can do it I mean you know unless you have some physical problem that I don't know about but walking is one of those things that just about anyone can do it's inexpensive there's just most of us can't come up with any real good excuse to not just start with walking right so I like for my clients to start there the other thing that it does is it starts your body getting used to the process of movement so like walking is going to get your joints like prepared if you're going to do other things like one of the things I hate to see is when somebody has not been exercising at all and they want to start with like running or they want to start with some kind of high impact shit it's like yeah your joints are just not ready for this you know if you want to like blow something that's a great idea and it strengthens I mean like you know when you're walking guys you know walk upright don't walk like this you know straighten your shit up pull your stomach in you will get a workout if you do it if you walk with intention I mean I'm all about a stroll but if you're like saying okay I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna walk like you will not believe the difference if you stand up straight and you pull your stomach in while you're walking and then um, so I started with walking and then I started wanting to do races and I had a brother-in-law who is an Ironman athlete and this was you know I just wasn't doing shit hardly other than just walking and I was determined to try to start riding a bike and uh, I wanted to do a triathlon and I wanted to run a race and he talked me through it one night at my mother-in-law's house and he said well this is what I would do then Are you well, you're gonna need to get a bike and he said find you a local bike club and tell them that you want to let like, you're a beginner and then go on some rides I was like okay and then he talked to me that was the first time I'd ever heard of something called the couch to 5k program he talked he told me about Jeff Galloway about the running and the walk and stuff he said I think you could start with that and I just went and got all of it and started I didn't think about it too much I didn't try to talk myself out of it I didn't sit around and allow myself to think oh it's probably gonna be too hard I, you know I don't have a plan or anything like that I was just like all right I'm just I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna figure this out and so I did and I am now getting ready to do like probably number 57 or 58 
of my half marathons. Um, I've done like six or seven triathlons, I think six triathlons. Um, I don't do them anymore, but I've done them. Um, the main thing that it, for me with triathlons that like kind of sucked the wind out of my sails is I am a very expensive blonde. <laughs> and when I'm not blonde, I'm purple. <laughs> and so I just, uh, me and the pool water don't get along too well. And I, I don't like to, I don't like to wreck my shit. So uh, I kind of gave up on the triathlons, but I've done four marathons. I've done seven Tough Mudders, which is a huge obstacle race uh, in the mud for 10 miles. Uh, I've just done all kinds of things, and uh, and I've just enjoyed every minute of it. I've, I used to do some figure competitions. I was never competitive, but I've you know done all the, the muscle building stuff. I lift weights. Um, I'm actually a certified yoga teacher. I don't teach, but I went through yoga teacher training. Um, I love yoga. Uh, so I just, it's one of those things where I just, fell in love with exercise because I allowed myself to do so. I quit trying to make exercise. Um, like I, I just I just quit using it as a way to um, abuse myself. I wanted to come up with a way to develop a really good relationship with it. Now, I still have days I don't wanna go, plenty of them. I, you know, most of the time I just tell myself, hey, it's on the plan, let's just do this. You don't have to feel like it. But I always feel better afterward always. Um, I have had times where I go to the gym and I get started and I get 15, 20 minutes in and I'm like, whoo, I'm not feeling it today. Then I just allow myself to leave. I'm like, you know, 15, 20 minutes is better than nothing. Check this one off. You know, there's just days where you have it and there's days where you don't. Um, but most of the time I will say I'm very motivated. I just, I enjoy seeing what my body can do. Um, I think that's one of the key things. And you know, it was always a dream of mine to be able to do sports. You know, I remember watching my brother play sports. I remember watching my friends. I have one of my dearest friends in the world. We're both training for this half marathon. And um, she's always been a fast runner. We've known each other 20 years. And she, um, you know, one of the joys that I have is that I actually, for this one, we've done some long runs together and I haven't died yet. <laughs> Now, I will say I felt close to dying a couple of times, but I haven't, she has slowed down and I've sped up a little for her. Um, you know, I just, I try to think about exercise as a, it's just as a way that it adds value to my life. Um, all right, so I'm gonna answer some questions so that uh, you guys, if you have them about exercise, I would love to, to, you know, help you or whatever. Let's say somebody keeps asking, what is PNP? That's my company. Um, it's my membership site where I have loads of these ladies are members. Some of them just follow me. They're not members. Uh, but it's, if you want to find out more information, just go to P as in Paul, N as in O, P as in Paul, 411.com. Um, I don't do meal plans ever for them. They have like a suggested one in the very beginning. Uh, this is for Michelle. Uh, the reason I don't is because I teach them actually how to get control over their eating. I teach them about how to honor their body and how to do this in a way they can do it for the rest of their life. I'm just, a, I don't love meal plans because meal plans, I think, it, they like dumb you down. You need to be able to make your own meal plan. Now I'm big on planning, but I teach my ladies how to make their meal plans, how to get started with all that, and how it adds value to your life, versus just saying, here, do this, eat this, get your weight off, now good luck keeping that off. Because then you don't learn anything. You learn how to follow a piece of paper. I'd rather you learn how to create your own piece of paper and then learn how to follow that. Um, let's see. Elaine, hey Elaine. Oh, Elaine's talking about 411. Hope you're doing good. Uh, Elaine's one of one of my girls. She's been with me for a while. She's quite the little athlete too. Um, Kelly is one of my tribe members who despises exercise. We actually did a live coaching session not too long, and uh, she kept talking about how she doesn't like exercise, but she's doing it, you know. And I said, "Look, if you're going to be doing it, we got to figure out a way for you to actually like it. And quit going through all this personal drama around it." I said, "What if you just start telling yourself, I don't have to feel like it." I'm just committed. Like, I just do it because I know it's good for me. You know, and a lot of you, that's what you're gonna have to do. Like, some people never ever fall in love with it, but you know it's so important to your health and you know it's so vital to just, you know, being a freaking human being that plans to live more than, you know, 50 years, that you're gonna do it. So my thing is always like, figure out a way 
to get your mind right around it so that you're not sitting around going, oh, I just hate exercise. I'm, I mean, if you're gonna do it anyway, then don't make it a terrible process to get there. That sucks ass. Like sitting around all day long, thinking about how you don't wanna do it. Anyway, this was her coaching session. She would like, you know, she wanted, she did, she wanted to be a morning exerciser, but she absolutely was not gonna be a morning exerciser. And so she always does it in the afternoons. And then all day long, she talks to herself about how much she hates it, but she does it anyway. I'm like, what if we just cut out all the hatred part and we just start saying, at three o'clock is when I exercise and I don't think about it the rest of the day. I'm just done because at three o'clock, I have to turn it on to feel like it. That's the only time of the day that I need to feel like it is at three o'clock. The rest of the day, we just don't allow that thought anymore. And if we want to think about it, we remind ourselves, oh wait, we're not supposed to be thinking about that anymore. <laughs> so, uh, Kelly, I hope you're okay with me just telling everybody your coaching session. <laughs> Uh, Charla, um, some yo-yo thinking they can go to the gym extra if they fall off the wagon with food. Yeah, no, that's a terrible way to even think about it. Like, guys, here's the thing. You're either on plan or off plan with your food. It has nothing to do with the gym. You're not going to, like, earn your... Not a one of you are a dog. Now, if you're a dog listening to this, then you can earn food. But if you're not then you don't go to the gym to earn or to make up for the, you know, the sins of the overeat or whatever. If you overeat, work on why you overate. Don't work on trying to burn calories because you're probably never going to outrun it. You know, I ran yesterday nine miles. My little thingy said I had burned 1,100 calories. That's barely a cheeseburger and a half an order of fries. Nine miles, hour and 45 minutes, all right? So thinking that you're going to eat ho-hos and then go to the gym and do something about it is back ass word thinking. What you want to do is you want to sit there and you want to be like, if I'm eating ho-hos I'm not supposed to be, let's figure out why am I eating them. And then let's clean that shit up. Because, you know, your overeating has nothing to do with just you don't have enough willpower. There's something always going on. And that's what I teach my clients. In fact, girls... I recorded all the stuff for the September release of the uh, ending overeating. So you guys be ready. We're gonna do all overeating all next month. We're gonna talk our heads off about it. Uh, Robin, hey, and Robin is a great example. Seriously, I wish you had a, a page where people could go visit Robin. I'd send them straight over there to you. Uh, exercise makes you feel better and helps shrink your body. But as she said, food is where it's at. Absolutely. Robin has done half marathons. What have you done? Have, are you training for your third now? I can't remember what, how many. But she did, um, she does the one that's, uh, is it the Detroit one? Where you do the one where it, uh, I know you run for um, trafficking and stuff. She's one of my members. But she's she's quite the athlete. She has, uh how, Robin, tell them how much weight you've lost and put it in here and how many mar half marathons you've done. That just is going to drive me crazy if I don't get that out. Jennifer, I had a personal trainer who made me feel guilty about just wanting to walk sometimes. He totally screwed up my mindset. Hey, Jennifer, first of all, no one can make you feel anything. You always choose. If he says walking sucks, you can think anything you want about that. Right now, you're choosing a thought about this guy and his advice that made you feel guilty. And now what you're doing is you're choosing a thought about this guy's advice back then that's causing you now to think you're screwed up. You're not screwed up. If you like walking, guess what? You can go for a walk. You don't have to have any other drama around about it. it drama, guys, mental drama is always optional. If you want it, have at it. But I'm going to tell you, for the majority of you, it never works out right. You know? So, like, what I would do, Jennifer, in this case, is I would change my thinking about that trainer and just be like, he didn't know what he was talking about. You know what I know? What I enjoy. And this is what I'm doing today. And that's the way I would leave it. Um, Sharla, gradually build up endurance, breathing pattern, etc. Yeah, that's, a, like, walking does so much stuff for you. Um, let's see. Tabitha, you are literally breathing life back into my hope for weight loss. Well, thank you, Tabitha. I, I was very nice of you to say that. <laughs> Cheryl, never have felt bad after workout. Always feel guilty or bad when skipping. Yeah, and here's the thing, guys. It, don't waste time feeling bad or guilty if you miss a workout. You know why? Because it will catch up to you, and it will snowball. 
Here's what I would do. If you, for some reason, do not exercise, just be honest with yourself about why you're gonna skip a workout and just say like, is this something I need to work on? Is this me making excuses? Or do I have like a legit thing today? Like um, on Friday, I took the day off. So I had several legit things come up. I had a flat tire on my way back home. I was like, damn, something's wrong with this car. Total flat. Luckily, I was in my neighborhood, so I was able to get it to the house. Uh, I was on my period and it was a rager. And I was just like, there's no way I'm exercising today. Just not. Today is one of those days where I'm choosing not to. I did not blame it on the tire. I did not blame it on my period or anything. Only thing I told myself is today I choose not to. Because that means that tomorrow you can just choose to do it. You don't need your life operating perfectly in order to make a choice either way. And I think that's important when it comes to exercise because consistency is a big thing for those of us who did not grow up loving exercise. I remember when I first started, I told myself, no days off. We're gonna walk every day, we can walk. This is not something that you need a day off from. And so I made sure that it got done every single day. It's amazing when you put your brain to work on being all in and committed, like if you really are committed, you figure stuff out versus looking for reasons not to do it. But you gotta get solid in your commitment. Hey Dana, I love that your brother-in-law motivated you to your first try in running and how you have pursued yoga and other sports for fun. Uh, you are my soul sister. I'm training for my first half marathon December the 10th and then my next goal is to do an Ironman, half Ironman, then maybe a full marathon, preparing to do a Tough Mudder next spring in Phoenix too. Hey, I've done the Phoenix uh, Tough Mudder. That was my first one. My very first one. I did it with a girlfriend. So um, this is a good story about exercise. So one of my clients um, and, and a friend of mine, she and I were at a I think we were just having a girls meet up in Ohio and it was a bunch of the PNP tribe members and we were talking and she said have you heard about this thing called the Tough Mudder this was the first year it came out and I was like no what is that and so we talked about it and she's I said well when is it she's like well it's in January and I was like I'm going to be in Phoenix like that weekend I'm doing the the half marathon on Sunday she was like we should sign up for that Tough Mudder. We'll go together. I'll sign up for the half, and then we'll do the Tough Mudder on Saturday, and we'll do the half marathon on Sunday, and we'll fly back home. I was like, yeah, that sounds good. So we didn't, like, both of us are ditzy blondes. We didn't research. We didn't do anything. We're just like, let's just do it. We get there. Every picture, we're like, I mean, we couldn't believe the shit they were making us do. I mean, we just thought this was going to be, like, crawling through some dirt, for 10 miles and that was about it. I mean, literally getting electrocuted and, and ice baths and things like that. I had no idea that mess was coming. And so we finished and then the next day we went and we did that half marathon. I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> like literally, we were struggle bus. I was like, from now, and, and I was a trainer. And I was like, from now on, I do my research before I sign up for things like this. <laughs> so but I did six more, so it's not too bad. And I'm supposed to do another one in September, but my partner is now going to yoga teacher training, so I am um, not sure I'm gonna be able to do it. Uh, it just depends, I don't know. I, I actually thought about doing it solo, but we'll see what happens. Um, Angela, hey, glad I got, uh, got here while you're live, cool. Let's see, Micah, do you have a suggestion on where to start with weights? I've started doing squats, with the bar after some cardio, but don't know what else to do. Yeah, Micah, so I tell a lot of people to go over to bodybuilding.com and check out Jamie Eason's, uh, I think it's called Lift Fit Program. It's really good. The, you can print off, a, it, it has a calendar and everything. Instructions on what to do, and it's all for weights. So I would start there. The other thing you can do sometimes at gyms is you can tell them, like you want to, like you would like an orientation to the weight room, and they can, you know, show you the things. If you don't know how to use the weights and stuff, you can do that. Sounds like you kind of know a little bit about what you want to be doing. So I would just go and look at her program. It's free, and um, I think it's pretty solid. Several of my clients have done it before. The other thing uh, beginners can do, and I, you know, if you're not great on form, because I'm a big stickler when it comes to weightlifting and stuff, is hire a trainer for like, like just 
pay the money to get two to three sessions and say, I want you to give me a plan. Like I want one full body workout and I want you to do this workout with me. Like I want to do it three times. Because what I want to do is I want to learn how to do it. So over the next three weeks, you know, we're going to meet together. We're, you're going to do it with me. Then I'm going to come back and do it on my own. And the next visit, I want to be able to ask you questions because this is what came up for me when I was by myself and do that. Sometimes it's just worth the investment of just paying for two to three sessions like that. And just be real clear on what you want out of it. Uh, do you exercise every day? Dale, I exercise usually five to six days a week. Uh, today I went walking, so and this was my sixth day. So um, I took off on Friday, but most weeks I would say I exercise. I, I'm probably good on six. Um, sometimes I just do five. It just depends if I'm traveling or if I'm uh, like you know when I'm like right now because I'm training for that half. I'm running a lot and my joints just ain't what they used to be. And it's, and I don't have joint problems, I've never broke anything, but you know, it's, I'm 43, and I notice now that it's better for me to take like two days off a week than it is to just grind, grind, grind. So like today I decided I just wanted to go walking, so I just did an easy walk and it was 25 minutes, done. That's it for me today. Plus I'm gonna be on my feet all day, well I already have done it, but I did all my food prep, I went to the grocery store, I will be working in my tribe tonight. Um, so all you tribe members, if you're wondering where I am, I'm coming. I had to get my shit done first. And then um, I'll be doing my weekly plan, like, you know, putting it down. Like, this is when I'm exercising. This is what I'm doing in work. This is where I have to be this week. This is what I'm eating. All that kind of stuff gets done on Sundays. So that's how I structure my week. But I would say five to six days. Um, I'm glad you're doing well, Elaine. Uh, Jeff and Jana, how much walking is good for our body in the beginning? Do you take a break any, uh, do, you t do you take a break one day a week? When I first started walking, I never took breaks, but I was only walking like, I started with 15 minutes. I think you just walk what you can. Like, don't go out there and kill yourself in the beginning, but you know, like, if you're, like, if you, the biggest problem you got is you're overweight, and you don't really have joint issues and stuff, then I would probably do, like, try to walk 15 to 30 minutes a day. Start with that, and then just see how you feel. You know, I, walking really doesn't need days off unless you're doing power walking, hill repeats. I mean, if you're doing some like smoking walking, that's one thing. But if you're, if, I mean, if we're talking about getting your fitness in, like walking your neighborhood, mental clarity, listening to the podcast, you know, getting your shit straight. I don't think you have to take days off. If you want to schedule them in, it's fine. I just don't think you have to. It's up to you. I think most people should get used to the idea that we should be able to walk at least 30 minutes every day of our lives until they put our, our you know, dead asses in the ground. Walking is just good for you. It's just part of life. And I try to squeeze extra walking in everywhere. You know how they always say, like, park farther away and all that stuff? I do that shit. My grocery store is about maybe, I don't know, a half a mile from here. Very often, I walk to the grocery store and start the shopping, and then my husband comes. He always, we split the grocery shopping up into two. He does all of our liquids because we drink a shit ton of water and stuff. And so he comes later, and then he picks up all of the water stuff, and then we meet at the checkout, and then we go on home. And I just, I just walk to the store. It takes me like, I don't know, 15 minutes. And I, that's just easy little ways to get in stuff. Sometimes if I go to um, like Target and stuff, I park at the end of the parking lot. And I wheel the cart all the way down there and I wheel the cart all the way back. But it's just that little bit of, those little extra bouts make a huge difference. Let's see. What's a good ratio cardio weights over a week? How many days each week? I tell people, like I think that now, I know I'm doing a lot of cardio right now because I'm training for a race, but when I'm not training for a race, I lift way more than I do cardio. I usually will lift four to five days a week when I'm not getting ready for a race. When I'm getting ready for a race, like I'm down to two days a week now. So I'm lifting weights twice and I'm running four days a week. Um, sometimes after I lift weights, 
I might do some cross training, like I might do some rower uh, for like 15 minutes, or I may do, like I love that hand crank thing. I like to get on that bad boy, especially after I've done upper body. We have like a rope pulley thing at our gym. I do that for like 10 minutes. I'll do like 30 seconds hard, a minute and a half of just steady things like just to mix it up. Um, but I think that basically if you're gonna, like let's say everybody wanted to start with, uh, you're gonna work out four days a week. You're like, I'm all in, Corinne, I can do four days. Tell me what I should do. I would do two days of those four, I would lift weights, and I would probably do full body in the very beginning. The other two days, I would walk, or I would do some, whatever cardio, if you like Zumba, do some Zumba, whatever you like, whatever floats your boat, do it. But that's what I would start with. But I think that weights, you know, if you lift heavy enough, and you lift fast enough, you're gonna sweat your ass off. A lot of times when I leave the gym from a weight workout, people are like, what were you doing? It's like, lifting bro, just lifting. Uh, Jill, finally went walking yesterday. I only got a mile, but hey, it's a start. Everything's always a start. I've been doing your 411. Oh good, lost 10 pounds in a month. I'm telling you guys that damn free program is so good. People who don't do the free program, I'm just astonished. Because I get people all the time telling me how much weight they lose on it. And it's been out there so long now that people have just been doing that free program for months. I, I get emails sometimes, people have lost 30, 40 pounds. I'm like, jeez. I mean, it's smoking good. It's uh, pnp411.com. You can't miss it. It's called Free Course. It's banana yellow on a black page. <laughs> uh, was going to walk today because it felt so good afterwards. And dang it, it's raining where I live in Cleveland. Jill, I don't know if you're interested, but you could go to um, YouTube and look up um, like walking videos. There's, a, I don't know if her name is Jessica Smith. I can't remember what her name is, but look up indoor walking videos. There are people that do like some little, like she'll, she'll like basically, her, she'll like stand there and then she'll do wide legs and stuff and she just talks the talk whole time. So it's like getting, it's almost like an active podcast. Um, so you could even do something like that, just w watching something along those lines if you wanted to get your walk in. Um, so Robin's getting ready to do her second half marathon. Sh Charla, yes, you are welcome to be a member. And she has, and Robin has lost 90 pounds, everyone. A nice round of applause. We also, I don't think they're on here, but just this week, we give out, I give out a shout out to Stephanie, who has now lost, I think it was 80 pounds and Heather, who has now lost 50 pounds over at the old PNP tribe. So I wanted to make sure to mention, I'm so glad Robin you're on here because I knew I was wanting to mention them and I was going to blank on that, <laughs> not do it. So but anyway, but shout out to my girls. They, they've been working very hard. Uh, Yvonne, doing my food prep and have plugged into my earbuds. Headed to the gym next, loving your motivation. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Charla has lost 150 pounds back in 2006 and she kept it all off. Um, let's see, Rebecca just started back today. And Jennifer, thank you, I needed these words. Gonna go use the treadmill and not feel guilty. You rock, exactly. Do ne never feel guilty for exercising in any form. Corinne, my hero, I need a wristband that says, what would Corinne say? We, it, probably fuck. <laughs> we all had to guess. Uh, Sharla, I need to get my 27 year old daughter on your page. She is in nursing school and is 300 with high blood pressure and diabetes. She's miserable. See if she listens to podcasts, Sharla. Get her to listen to my podcast. It's, it's really good. We're up to like, we're in, I know I have 20 episodes with Kathy and then I have all those Facebook lives that I do on the Saturdays where I rebroadcast this stuff. So see if she'll listen to those and, and get her to sign up for my free program. It's free. Um, since following you, I have been practicing small wins. This is Georgette. I have been successful in planning my meals and exercise for a week now. I am currently on week two. Thanks so much for your advice. You are very welcome, Georgette. Um, Jeff and Jana, how do you get motivated? I actually have, uh, there's a podcast, Jana, on this topic. Uh, if you go to fit, P-H-I-T dot click slash podcast, you'll find the Losing 100 Pounds with Fit and Fat podcast. Uh, if you go to the blog, the pnp411.com, and just look at podcasts, you'll see all the ones with show notes. There's one on motivation. There's also, I think if you'll go to pnp411.com, go to the blogs 
I have some articles on motivation and, and like how does it start, but essentially motivation, the way you get motivation is you have to start doing something. We usually wait to feel motivated to do something. The problem is, is that's not how motivation actually works. Motivation works by saying, I'm going to do this, period. And you just start with something. You don't wait to feel like it. I tell my girls all the time, like, I don't know what the hell y'all talking about. What do you mean I need to feel like it? You need to feel like eating your healthy food? No, you don't. You need to feel like getting off your ass right now and doing what you say you're going to do for yourself. That's all you need to feel like doing. So what I would do is I would make a list of all of the small things that you are willing to start. Just the small ones, not the big ones, not the crazy ones. You know, Jana, I would get that free course that I talk all about that in video one. But make a list of all the little things that you're willing to get done and then just be like, all right, no more sitting around waiting, 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 waiting on my motivation and my feel like bone to get kicked in. That ain't gonna happen. The only way motivation is felt is once you start doing things and then when you start doing things, you notice all of a sudden you're getting motivated. And the reason why I know this is because I cannot tell you how many people have said to me, and I have said the same words out of myself, I don't know when it changed, but I just all of a sudden was doing well because you didn't wait. Like I wasn't motivated when I decided that I was going to lose weight. I wasn't sitting around feeling great. I felt pretty shitty. I wasn't feeling motivated at all. What I did was I felt committed to changing and I figured out the things I was going to get committed to doing and I just started doing those things. Then all of a sudden I was like motivated to do more. I was starting to feel better and stuff. That comes when you start showing up for yourself, when you start doing some action. Uh, Robin, I've lost 90 pounds. Yes. And I'm training for my second half and I'm still losing more weight. You don't have to wait to exercise until you reach a perfect weight. Find what you like and do it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Charlotte's like, you make small goals to get motivated. <laughs> Charlotte, you're so smart. Why are you not in my tribe? <laughs> Charlotte, it's pnp411.com. Kenya. I've lost 100 pounds and I love to walk. I found the further I walk away from home, I know I have to walk back. I love walking in the morning. Once you find what you like, you will start to enjoy it. That is the truth. Renee, I, and congratulations on your weight loss too, honey. Uh, Renee, I make little challenge ch challenges to motivate myself and work in self-care rewards. That's another great way to do it. What's the best exercise website? Ooh, y'all. <coughs> I was about ready to choke. What's the best exercise <coughs> website to follow or go by for starters? Um, for exercise, one here's one that I do like. You can go to YouTube and look up Fitness Blender. They have a lot of exercise videos that are like all levels and stuff. And you can do them in your home and they're free. I like them. Um, I also tend to like the Beachbody videos. They always have um, like modifiers and stuff like that. So I, and I know their program, so I'm a little bit biased just because I've done a lot of them. A lot of my clients like to do them and stuff. So I don't really follow all the other video people out there. But I know that Fitness Blender for people who want something free. If you like um, yoga, do yoga with me.com is also free yoga and stuff. They're really good. And then if you look up for, there's a girl on YouTube who has several videos called Curvy Yoga. And she specializes in women with, you know, 100 to 200 pounds to lose and yoga for them. She's really good. And, uh, and just Beachbody because I, they have some strength training programs and things like that. And they always have a modifier who is, you know, doing, um, you know, all the modifications and stuff like that. Um, I'm 57. Please tell me I can do this. Rebecca, you can do this. Uh, yeah, here's Elaine. She's 62. <laughs> she, she's sitting there going, what are you talking about? You're still in your fifties. Get off your ass. <laughs> Dana. Uh, yes, so you're giving Fitness Blender and YouTube. Thank you, Miss Ma'am. Um, I have quite a few. One of my coaches, honey, is, let's see, Mary Jo, I think is 60, 
60 or 61. She may have just turned 60. She's one of my, like, one of the coaches that works for me. I, mean, I have, like, age is a number. If you want to think that it's like somehow your age is stopping you from doing stuff, then guess what? You're stopped. Or you can just think, this is my age. I would like to, I'd like to be on the earth a little bit longer, so I probably ought to get my ass doing some stuff that's going to make that happen. If you allow 57 to be the new 97, guess what? You're not going to do anything for yourself. Kathleen, 63 pounds down. Yes, 92 to go. Started at the personal trainer last week. People keep telling me not to exercise until I'm done, but it makes me feel better. I think that's bullshit. I don't think that anybody should wait until they're done to start exercising. If you want to exercise, just start doing it. It is good for you. But I also don't think you have to exercise in order to lose weight either. I think people should just find forms of movement that feels great for them. For me, it's weights and it's yoga and it's running and it's that kind of stuff. For other people, it is Zumba. It is, you know, no weights. It is, you know, body movement type stuff. It is walking. It is whatever floats your boat. My concern is so many people who just don't want to move at all and that's terrible for your body. Hello, Miss Robin. Uh, Leslie Sanson is the one who does walking videos. Yes, thank you. Rita, um, I have you hooked on Korean. <laughs> Y'all are seeing some of your friends on here, that's funny. Um, you are amazing. I still, I have lost eight pounds without trying because of your little wins idea. I also like this idea to help with my anxiety. Love your ideas. Shelly, all right, so I'm gonna give you a big tip. Don't say that you're doing this um, that without trying. You are trying. You are, well, here, you're not even trying. You know what you are? You're doing, period. Like, girl, you're doing, you're doing something or you wouldn't be down eight pounds, right? So like always give yourself credit. I know that you meant it like, you know, this is easy kind of thing and that's wonderful. I don't want to like rain on that parade, but I also want you to like start acknowledging like, yeah, this eight pounds didn't just fall off all by itself. It's because my Shelly ass is over here doing things. Um, Hands Fit on YouTube has great videos, someone says. Uh, Tanya loves, or Tanya loves Shailene Extreme. I love Shailene Extreme too. Oh my God, that video, Burn Intervals, to this day, is my favorite weighted cardio style workout of all time. I, I get, if that thing ever gets scratched, I will die. I will have to figure out a way to get that, because I mean, I love that video. I wish she just sold it individually and had gifted it to people. Stephanie, I was just watching one of your past videos from five months ago. <laughs> Julie, I lost another 1.2 pounds after looking at my journal, like you said, and changing things around. I lost 13.9 pounds on your challenge and finally lost that since then. Yes. So when she talks about the challenge, what, um, <laughs> Elaine, you have MJ by six months. <laughs> Y'all are funny. Um, when she's talking about the challenge, what she is saying is I run... A, like a weight loss like challenge right before I open the tribe again. We're not open right now. We will open again on October the 15th. I only do small enrollment windows, get them in, train them up right, and then we close, like we stay down for a little bit. Like our last group joined the 1st of August. They're getting ready to move to the main tribe. Um, it's next weekend actually. And then we'll have like a month off from like, if we just learning how to be one big tribe. We're gonna focus on overeating and stuff. Then the next month, I will be doing another opening. So I like to just make sure that we are, I'm just kind of systematic like that. So um, before we open, what I do is I do a closed group where people can spend a week with me. They go through my challenge program, which is a little bit different than the free course. It kind of ups the ante just a little bit. And there's videos every day like this in that challenge group. And then if you want to join the tribe at the end, you can. If you don't, you got a free week of of work and some of these people did the free challenge and didn't join but they still follow me and I tell them all the time like I do that challenge every time if I was you if it's working don't mess with it right um let's see I'm 53 this is Linda and lost 18 since June all right uh, until PNP had a lot of problems staying on plan and losing weight way to go Linda 
Uh, Emily, thank you for shooting outside. I love seeing the sunshine. The rain from Harvey is... I, actually, Emily, I was just in the tribe a little bit ago uh, reading... I think you had posted in there, and, and you also had posted on Amy's page, and I was reading that because I've been trying to watch and make sure Amy's okay. Um, but anyway, I was thinking about you, and uh, I'm glad that you get to see the sun. I see some green grass over there if you want, if that helps. <laughs> I, I'm like, this is some serious shit. I was watching the news, and uh, it reminds me of when Nashville had its epic flood. I mean, it was it was like that. Our interstates. You, you could send boats down them and stuff. It was insane. So anyway, you guys stay safe down there. Um, Debbie, thanks Corinne. Down 24 pounds since April with your help. Uh, Beachbody On Demand, a lot of people do that. Uh, yoga conditioning for weight loss is a great for different people at different levels. It's on Amazon. Hey, I need to check that out. I love me some videos, so does Emily. She's our video queen. Actually, Emily knows, like, in our tribe, anytime we have questions about workouts and stuff, she has only, like, 250. And I think she's purged a bunch. Um, but she knows about workouts and stuff on videos and stuff because she's always been a home workout girl. Hello. Any tips for people who are on the road for a week at a time regarding exercise? I, find hotels that have gyms and use them. When I travel a lot, like, I go to Vegas a lot, I like I'll run the strip or I'll walk the strip and stuff like that but I always try to find hotels that have gyms and I just get my ass up and I get in there real early in the morning because there's a lot of people who travel who get up early in the mornings to work out so you got to get in there and you got to get in there fast um, if I don't have weights then I will a lot of times I will do little routines where I just use their treadmill and I'll walk or I'll run for two to three minutes get off then I'll just do some push-ups, crunches, squats. Just, you know, like I'll just do that for like 30, 45 minutes over and over and over again. And that's like an easy way to like bootstrap a workout. You could always go walking anywhere. Just, um, you know, I've been known to Uber to like a Greenway type place in a city so that I can go run. And then when I'm done, I just Uber back. Um, one of the other things I used to I used to have some programs like this for my girls as I would tell them if they travel to bring a resistance band with them and then find a stairwell in the hotel and then have your band run up some stairs like do like two minutes of stairs at the top you know where like whether you like I stayed at a hotel not too long ago and it had um, four floors so I could run up four flights of stairs if you have a resistance band you get to the top you do some curls you do some presses you know you just do like just like some chest pulls whatever you run back down and go back up and you do it again and you just keep doing that and those are easy ways to work out 20 minutes 30 minutes of that easy there's also um, if you look up on the internet go to like just Google deck of cards workout you can bring your uh, set of cards and you just uh, everything gets assigned all the four suits get assigned a, like a body weight you just start flipping cards over and every time like whatever whatever the suit is and the number is what you do and it's a good workout and it's always a mix up um, mixed up thing a lot of my travelers do that too um, I have lost 47 pounds Donna with PNP man you're fixing to hit the 50 pound club shit Corinne and the tribe are the real deal love them thank you miss Donna Stephanie I've tried so many programs that had me weighing and measuring every single thing and making sure I hit my macros. I almost read that as unicorns, I swear to God, for the day. It made me insane and not very happy. Looking forward to trying your method this week. Yeah, Stephanie, it's so good. So, like, literally, don't weigh or measure anything. In fact, I just did our food prep and I didn't weigh and measure shit. The only thing I did do is I made snack bags and I used a, the half cup scoop for my son because it was convenient, but not because it was a half cup. So... I tell my people all the time, like, you can weigh and measure a little bit if you want to, but I don't have them track anything. I have them just start when they actually feel hunger and stop when they're satisfied. And that's it. Don't eat by a clock. Eat by your gut. That's it. And it works magic. I mean, it's so simple. It's just so simple. Um... This is 
got y'all got a lot of friends up in here. Y'all talking to each other in the comments and stuff. I'm having to scroll through y'all. <laughs> Rita, you won't believe this. I'm 55 and I've been going to the gym for five months and I pulled tendons in my ankle walking on the treadmill. Woo! And I went to the doctor and he told me I was too old to be working out. And I told him he was crazy and I'm still going to the gym because it makes me feel stronger and healthier. You need to change doctors. What the? Shh. Are you serious? Like, that just angers me. Sorry, but it does. Like, why would somebody tell someone you're too old to exercise? I guess you're just supposed to, like, I don't know, start teaching your body how to be in a recliner and under a shawl? Shit. I would, it's a good thing he's not my doctor. I probably would have throat punched him right in the middle of his session. You keep exercising. You pulled tendons. Anybody could pull tendons. That's not your age. That's just shit happens, right? So you just keep doing it, Rita. All right, everybody. Have a good one. I'll be back next week. If you have a topic you would like me to talk about, just message me on Facebook and I will do that. Go to, if you want the free course, pnp411.com. You can download it. Guys, I, it would be so awesome if you're listening to the podcast, share it with your friends and please rate and review it. Um, it helps us tremendously in the iTunes if we get rated and reviewed. So we would appreciate only five stars and of course only good reviews. <laughs> Otherwise, don't bother. <laughs> but if you need instructions for that, uh, you can go to my website and if you search review, there's a page that will tell you exactly how to leave a, a rating and a review on iTunes. All right, y'all have a good week and I'll talk to you later.